preparation, one of the best things you can do for yourself is start to make a list of standards used by airlines and other travel companies and groups. Bring the list with you. It will help you frame things. Under federal law, for example, an airline has to pay at least $200 if it bombs you. Yet many people accept as little as $50. It's not hard to find this information. Just call a customer service and say you want to find out the airline's rules for travelers. In theory, people know to do this, but too few people take the time, invest a couple of hours, it will save you many times that much in time, expense, and aggravation. Look up the airline's standards and the government rules, such as those of the U.S. Department of Transportation. Michael Moko, a consultant in New York, wanted his $150 fee waived for making a change to his ticket. We don't have change fees, said Jonita, the airline's customer service rep he spoke with. Yes, you do, Michael said. If I make the change the same day that I buy the ticket, how persuasive. That information makes you. And just for a small invest on investment of time, Nicholas Mark was afraid to put his camera film through the security machine at the San Francisco International Airport. The TSA official said he had to since his film was on the ASA at 800. The official pointed to a security sign saying the X-ray machine is a film set, said Nicholas, a lawyer in Hong Kong. So should he have backed down? No, I told him that the transportation security administration website says traveler can request hand inspection and the Chicago and Philadelphia honored my request without question, Nick said. The official actually tried to put the film back into the machine while Nick was talking. Please stop, he said, and the official did. Are you afraid? Is it either for the mental responsibility in a democracy for citizens to know their rights? Next film was priceless. When my students don't use these tools, it shows either it's harder to meet their goals or they don't meet them at all. One of my students was told by an airline rep that his price was locked in. The next day, when he tried to buy the ticket, it was $25 more. He thought it wasn't fair. He finally found a manager and asked him if the airlines valued each promises. Eventually, he got the $25 back. But was it worth the hour I spent? He asked. Well, Maybe not, but he didn't have to spend the hour. The problem was he didn't get the name of the person who told him the price was locked in. He didn't get the location. He didn't get any of the relevant details. So he had to work much harder to get his money back. This is the price of not doing it right. Sometimes you won't succeed at all. If you do it right, you get one extra hit every nine games at least. Hotels. A very Sheffield was a star preferred guest. 
as part of the program. When you have a bad state, you get 500 points usable toward the hotel, airline ticket, etc. Matter of factly, every told the manager that someone else's hair was in her shower. She saved it for the hotel if they were interested. On check-in, she also had been able to get the promised upgrade despite her platinum status. Other things were not up to snuff. I paid $400 for this room, she told the manager. I could have stayed elsewhere for $200, but I've always gotten such a great service as Tower. It's always been just great. No threat was involved. The manager gave Avery 20,000 points, equivalent to a US round trip airline ticket. Avery felt she could have done better. I could have asked her about her day, she said. I could have offered to send a note to her supervisor about what great service she provided. In other words, every negotiation, even a success, is a learning experience for the next one. As you read most things in life, the more you use your business, the more they will give you. What you should not do is threaten them with ending the relationship unless they do such and such. It's like threatening your spouse with a divorce every time you have an argument. After a while, they, didn't, they don't believe you. Instead, talk about your investment in the relationship. Jack Collin strolled around the state at the Hilton Whenever she could, she wanted to go to Hawaii and stay at the Hilton there, but it was during the blackout period. Very using points for room was prohibited, even though Jackie had enough points for a three-week stay. I just wanted to use my points for two out of the 14 nights, Jackie said. The reservation clerk would still get credit for 12 nights, Jackie told the, the club she was celebrating her own graduation from business school after years of hard work. The clerk thought about this and offered her six free nights. Jacqueline used several negotiation tools here. She was incremental. She shared details and she made her long-term relationship with the hotel clear. She thought about the reservation class own bonus, and I was upgraded to a premium Aloha suit, Jackie added. Even if you don't have an existing relationship with the hotel, hotels like to start them is the vision of loyalty that matters. Salman R. Ansari made a 10-day reservation for his uncle at a short hotel in Philadelphia. At the last minute, his uncle got sick. It was an online booking. The hotel manager, Mr. Ma, told Salman that he'd be charged when his uncle stayed there or not. All online bookings are not refundable, no exceptions. Salman asked if he could move the reservation to graduation week and have his family and friends stay there. The total number of days would be larger. This was a statement of loyalty and it provided more business for the hotel. He was trading items of unequal value and Mr. Mark approved it. Salman now an attorney at his family's law firm, Qatar, had to do all the suggesting, but that's what you will often have to do. 
Heavy travelers have more stories. The difference with the getting one is you become very conscious of the fact that you are in a negotiation. It makes things more precise, focused, and successful because you can more easily replicate what you are doing from one negotiation to the next. One of my graduates wanted to stay at Edward in McLean, Virginia, and next to his lawyer side, the travel agent said the hotel was fully booked and would not even call the hotel for him. The hotel's central reservation office reported the same thing. So the graduate called the hotel himself. He noted to the front desk that he worked for Sai, whose visitors stay at the hotel a lot. He also noted that many hotels have a reserve room available for the last minute emergencies. Could you use one of those as a reserve room for me? He asked. Persistence, standards, and linkage got him a room at the hotel. No, doesn't always mean no, he said. Alain Boxer booked rooms at the Flamingo a Hotel in Las Vegas. She tried to get upgrades on rooms for her friend and for her and her partner. But when she called and asked about upgrades, none were available. She asked a reservation club behind the counter before checking and measuring. Same answer, none were available. She thought about it briefly, then got in line again to talk to someone at the front desk. When it was her turn, she addressed the person by name and said, Ha! She said that they were in Vegas to celebrate her friend's full recovery from an injury in Las Vegas last fall, and they chose the Flamingo to celebrate. Isn't that nice? The clerk said, Alan asked, Have you ever given upgrades for special occasions? This surely is one for us. They got two upgrades with the king beds and on a high floor overlooking the strip, value $280, persistence and frame. Thomas Greer wanted to cancel his reservation at the Fairmont Copley Plaza Hotel without cancellation charges. The reservation office told him there would be a charge since he was within the 24-hour cancellation period. It was 4 p.m. on Sunday. I'm providing 24 hours notice, Thomas said. I don't plan to check in the hotel until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. The reservation clock said the hotel's cancellation policy assumed at 3 p.m. check-in. Isn't that the earliest possible check-in? Thomas asked. What percentage of the guests check in at the first moment that check-in is available? Couldn't this all be misinterpreted by a well-mentioned customer? She, he was polite the entire time. Cancellation fee waived. Great examples of reframing. This kind of reframing works often. Atul Kumar wanted a very late checkout 7 p.m without penalty at the Stowood Palace Hotel in San Francisco. As you can imagine, this was hours after the regular checkout time of 2 p.m. Atul was a frequent guest at Stowood, but this clearly wasn't enough by itself. So Atul asked if the hotel was 100% booked. It was not. In other words, the room was not needed. He noted that he checked in at 11.30 p.m. The previous night, 
Also, even if he checked out at 7 p.m., he would have been at the hotel less than 20 hours, less than a full day. He asked if the cleaning staff worked at night. They did. So another late check-in can get my room, he said. He added that if it turned out that the hotel really needed the room, he'd be ready by 5 p.m. and could leave then. And the hotel agreed. A true refrain the situation keyed on the relationship used the fact that it wouldn't cost the hotel anything and offered to be helpful if things changed. His whole attitude was helpful and calm. When you want to late check out, you can ask when the last room is going to be cleaned. For hotel without night shift, it's usually about 5 p.m. You can ask that your room be cleaned last or at least later. If you are a frequent guest and you have a good reason, you will often succeed. You can also ask when do you need the room for another guest? I know you are going to ask, what if everybody did this? Well, everybody doesn't do this. Second, this is a high price problem for a hotel. It will increase the customer service. Hotel will better be able to match guests with their needs. Not every guest needs a late check-in. Jason Cummings went to Lexington Park. Maryland to participate in a triathlon on the five hotels booked. He went to one of the hotels and struck up a conversation with a desk clerk. Where was she from? How long had she lived there? He had some, he had come for the triathlon, he said, and didn't realize the hotels would all be booked. He told, how he was in the military and that's how he'd gotten interested in triathlon. A clerk told him there was a nearby Navy post. He called someone she knew there and found room for $15 per night for Jason, a former rest point instructor and now a lieutenant colonel.